proud of science. I'm proud of science because science today is giving a lesson to politicians. It's showing that today to take a picture of something that one man dreamt 100 years ago, you need people from 40 different countries. You need people from all over the world. And what many would regard as science fiction has become a reality with astronomers taking the first ever photograph of a black hole in the galaxy. The Event Horizon Telescope has just produced the first ever direct image of a black hole. This amazing feat required global collaboration to turn the Earth into one giant telescope. Our own SKA telescope project and local astrophysicist Professor Roger Dean also contributed. So what does this mean for South Africa and for science? I'm joined by Professor David Block, author and astronomer from Wits University. We had many, many chats. And uh, we go back many years, don't many you, moons, Tim? Uh, yes, I mean, I should, absolutely. I should put it in the galaxy. Yes, in indeed. Many moons yes, yes. But here we are, you say this is the culmination of something that was conceptualized in 1919. That's correct. In yeah. 1919, there was a magical moment. Yeah. There was an eclipse of the sun, and astronomers actually went and photographed where the positions of the stars, and I actually have that very photograph yeah. right here in my hands. Okay, yeah, let's and put it And the thing is, I mean, it really is quite amazing. Mm -hmm. And it was there that, we sh that it was proven that a massive gravitational force field would actually bend starlight. So in other words, light traveling past the sun doesn't travel in straight lines, Tim, but travels along curves. But that was with regard to the sun. But of course, I remember many years ago as a student at Wits University, this takes us back to 1972, 1973, yeah. I was immersed, immersed in the study of black holes. Mm. They were just theoretically to me so tantalizing. You almost felt as if you could touch them, but was, that, was from only, that was from a mere mathematical point of view. Well, I've heard about black holes before, yes. right? And the only thing I made to understand yes. about them is that things disappear into right. a black hole. Right. And that's about it. Right. And of course, this we're talking about something that is billions, if not millions, of uh, light years away. It's right? 55 uh, million light years 55 away. 55 million yes, light years. Yes, not in our galaxy. It's in another galaxy okay. called Messier 87 in the constellation of Virgo. So it's very, well, not very distant, but it's millions of light years away. But you know, Prof. Uh, yes. As excited as you and your fellow scientists yes. are about this, this is baffling yes. our minds. Right? Yes, and it I is. want you to explain what you mean. You say it's in another galaxy, yes. it's not in our galaxy. Right. Now, talk me through uh, galaxies yes. and the universe. Right. right. I'd and, be happy. And if we can have a sense of how many galaxies we yes. have. And I want to appreciate the vastness of, Absolutely. of, of, of the universe. Absolutely. So what's the difference? There? So we are living in a galaxy yeah. called the Milky Way galaxy. Uh -huh. And on a beautiful winter's evening, you see the beautiful grand arch of the Milky Way. Yeah. Now the Milky Way contains around a million, million stars. Million, a million, 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 million stars. And that's our home, right? And that's our home. Yeah. I love what you say yeah. there. That is our veritable home. Uh -huh. we, we are going, we are on the Earth, and we're going around the sun, and the sun is going around the center of our galaxy. So that's the Milky Way. Sure. So when you, when you look up and you see the Milky yeah, Way, that's you say, right. oh, that's, well, that's you're right. part of that thing. That's right. That's, that's my home. Right. That's right. That's your home. Okay. And then we have a group of galaxies of which the Milky Way is a member. Okay. And that's called the local group of galaxies. Yes. And that contains galaxies like the Magellanic Clouds, which you can see on a winter's evening, or, for example, the Andromeda Spiral Galaxy. So there's a group of galaxies, a local group of galaxies. With their own millions of stars. Millions also millions, of, millions of, of stars, yeah. that's right. And with the Andromeda Galaxy, we're looking back 2 million years in time, which means that light traveling at 300,000 kilometers per second in vacuum is taking 2 million years to reach our eyes. But that's just still, in astronomical sense, very, very local. But then galaxies don't like to be alone. They generally are found, or invariably are found, in groups. And the galaxy in question here, Messier 87, is part of what we would call the Virgo cluster of galaxies in the constellation of Virgo. So in other words, 
basically you have the building blocks of the universe are galaxies, but galaxies are not existing on their own. Our Milky Way is part of the local group. Then 20 megaparsecs away, which is around 60 million light years, you have the Virgo cluster of galaxies. Then the next building blocks of, of the universe are not just clusters of galaxies, but superclusters, which are clusters of clusters of yeah. galaxies. Yeah. And then the mind starts boggling yeah, because it is. you have superclusters of superclusters. Anyway, now to come back to the the black hole yes. that was photographed. Yes. Right? There, there's a lot of excitement around. Right. And it's not just for purposes of history that right. uh, you know the right. interest uh, was generated then exactly. in 1919. There's something yes. bigger that's going yes. on here with Absolutely. the black hole. What does it mean Absolutely. for science and Well, this is a lovely question, on? Tim. Um, this is the culmination if only Albert Einstein was alive. This is the culmination, I think, in a real sense, of Einstein's dream. You know, Einstein is reported to have said that imagination is more important even than knowledge. Mm. And he imagined that if you had massive gravitational fields, light would be deflected around it. And then we had mathematicians and theoreticians like Swathchild, Kerr and Newman, who really pioneered the theory of black holes. But the idea was that the concept was there, but we could never, ever photograph it. I think what's so incredible about this photograph, mm -hmm. and we have to salute Professor Roger Dean at the University of Pretoria and their whole team of the EHT, the Event Horizon Telescope, for doing this. But just imagine, Tim, for a moment, that you've got an object which is sucking in matter around it. You've got matter swirling around mm. the event then horizon, like a bath, yeah. and then going inner, inward and inward until it reaches the event horizon. Now, the event horizon is a boundary. It's a region of space-time. If you go in there, even if you were to accelerate your rocket engines to the speed of light, even if you could theoretically travel at 300,000 kilometers per second, you would be trapped. The gravitational force field yes. is so intense yeah, yeah, yeah. that we say the RDT is negative. It means you are inextricably linked uh, and drawn into the center of the black hole until you get basically squashed to zero volume and infinite density. Well, mixed feelings. It's like a wow thing, but that's scary at the same time. I think that's Thankfully, we're not going to the black hole. Well, we're I, not going to reach that. I think time. that's right. I mean, you know, people ask me on, on, on social media, Prof, what does this mean for me? It doesn't mean anything for them in terms of danger. Yeah. But in terms of, and you were talking about science, I would love to see, I mean, I've been at WIT since 1982, 83, whatever it was, but I like to see the mindsets of young people, our leaders of tomorrow, ignited, not only in the field of, for example, banking, mm. but in the field of astronomy. You know, Tim, as a young boy, 15 years old, and I looked up and I saw Comet Bennett, there was a passion there. The candle was forever lit. What are comets? Mm. What, what is Saturn? What is Jupiter? I suddenly realized I could live in awe and wonder. I haven't worked a day in my life, Tim, because my job is my fun, mm. my, fun my career. And what I'd like to say is this, that I wish, my desire is, that many more people might consider careers in astronomy, in astrophysics and in applied mathematics, of which astronomy and mechanics forms a little part. But I believe that there is such an exciting future, especially now, mm. with the SKN or everything else happening around that. And we have we have all these telescopes here in That's South right. Africa. Absolutely so. Waiting for skilled, trained, passionate Absolutely. young scientists to take opportunities Absolutely there. Now, but, so. but Prof, there's something that intrigues me about the mm. black hole. I read somewhere they talk about this image, if you, one wants to understand, being an event that occurred in the past. Yes. Oh, yes. That, you know, we, we yes. may think of it as something that yes. happened on the day it was yes. revealed. Yes. But what we are seeing there is something that happened in the past. Absolutely. Absolutely. Millions of years. Can we explain that? Absolutely, Just, I can. Know, we, so we, the speed we, of light. Yeah, yeah, tell me. I mean, we, many of us think of life as something that you live forward, right? That's you true. come from the far, past, true. but you, you're going true, to the future. Too. Yeah.
But yeah. now, here's yes. an event, but it yes. happened a long time yes. ago. Now, let's take our sun. If, if there's a solar prominence, in other words, a flame leaping up from the surface of the sun, yeah. and we record it to happen at noon, 12 o'clock, noon, yeah. the flame didn't actually erupt at noon, the solar prominence. Mm. It occurred at 11.52, eight minutes before, before the photons reached us. Yeah. It takes eight minutes from the sun for light to travel to reach terra firma, the planet Earth. Yeah. So if you've got a star 100 light years away, it means that you're looking 100 years back in time because light doesn't travel infinitely fast. Light travels at the speed of light, which, as I've said, is 186,000 miles per second or 300,000 kilometers per second in vacuum. So in astronomy, we're always looking back in time. So with this black hole, which is around 55 million light years away, we, you're quite right. As you see the swirling orbs of the, the, of the gas swirling around the event horizon before it actually falls into the black hole, you're looking back to what was happening 55 million years ago. And I think that that's quite amazing in astronomy as it is very different to our lives where we're always forward planning. Mm -hmm. But in astronomy, we are now able... I've just written a book with Professor Kenneth Freeman and we're discussing galaxies, you know, right at the observable horizon around, you know, more than 50 uh, billion light years away. I mean, it is staggering. But doesn't it amaze you, Tim, that we've got the technology today well, to look so far back? Very, very amazing. Very brief response from you, Prof. I mean, astronomy, from what you're telling me, yes. actually tells us about events that happened in the past. That's correct. And astrology yes. tells, to tell us about the future. Yes, now that's lovely, isn't it? Is <laughs> it that, is. I, I've always regarded astrology myself as a myth, of course, because I have identical twins, Nathaniel and Tevia, not identical, non-identical twins, but the point is they couldn't have more different personalities. Yes, yes. And yet they're born under the same yeah, yeah, star yeah. signs. Yeah, yeah. So in that sense, true. Astrology, yeah. you know, trying to project what will happen. Yeah. But I think the wonder of the scientific method and of astronomy is that it's this cosmic paintbrush and we're forever looking back into time, right to the beginnings of sure. space and time at the Big Bang. Pleasure to talk to you, Prof, always. Uh, Tim, you're great. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. Well, we took a trip back to 55 million years ago yes. with uh, Professor Block here. And that's our show for tonight. I'm inviting you to join me tomorrow morning for the Mutisa Network at 9 o'clock when we look at the image of South Africa across the globe. I'll be having interesting guests on the show. News is next. And from us, good night to you.